In part 11 of our online series, Introduction to Optics and Lens Design, I'm going to talk about ghost images. Now here's the scenario. Your lens looks great on paper, and the shop did a fine job of building it. But when you test it, you see a horrible ghost image whenever a bright source enters the field. That's not a good situation. It happens all too often, and the customer will not be at all happy. To prevent this sort of surprise, Synopsys offers a suite of powerful features you should know about. They're found in the MGH dialog, Menu Ghost Image, and with those tools you can analyze the ghost and, and you can also correct them as you go. Put briefly, a ghost image is a concentration of light at the image arising from two unwanted reflections within the lens system. If you have three lenses, there are 15 possible ghosts. With six elements, you have 66 ghosts, and, and so on. There's usually a bunch of them, and sometimes one of them can be pretty bright. That's a lot to keep track of, but we have tools for the job. To see what some of these tools can do, <clears throat> I've made a macro, which comes when you install the program. Get out the lens in, from location 1, and we're going to look at the ghosts. Now, it's not obvious that there's any ghosts in this lens, but then it never is. Let's open the dialog MGH. At the upper left is the Ghost button. That feature is used to find ghosts using a paraxial ray trace. Um, it, it's not completely accurate because real rays are more accurate, but it's much faster and it's a good way to find out where the problems are likely to show up. So click the Ghost button right there. And you get a listing here. And under the Y marginal ray, uh, look at the smallest value, 0.55 millimeters. So paraxially, it says that there's a ghost image. The, re the light reflects from surface 6, then goes back to surface 1, and then goes on to the image, and it's, it, it's not too far out of focus. Now, this could be a bright blur. This could be a bad ghost. Right there. Um, if, if the lens is long, uh, it's easier to pick out uh, the ghost from the second part of the listing, which lists them in order. It sorts them. And the brightest one is at the bottom. And right here you see, indeed, from surfaces 6 to 1 is the brightest ghost. So most of the ghost energy is coming from that ghost image. Now we know where it's coming from. Okay, open the macro that I prepared for you, ghplot.mac, which uh, has a bunch of different things that will analyze the ghost of that particular lens. There's eight modes, and while we're at it, let's, <coughs> let's mention the help file again. I want you to select the characters, GH plot, right there, and then look at the tray prompt. Well, it's a multi-line command, so you, it does, can't show you the format. If the characters you select make a one-line command, well, it, it shows you the format, but in this case, it's a multi-line command, so it tells you. In either case, once the tray prompt is shown, you hit the F2 key, and you go straight to the help file section on that topic. Okay, we'll run the macro and look at the first picture. Oh my goodness, look at that. That dark blob is probably the ghost that we noticed earlier. The first call to GHBot uses mode 1, producing a picture of all the ghosts superimposed, and that's what you see. Here's what the mode 2 analysis did. It's the second of the requests. It looks like this. It displays them this way, and indeed, look at that peak. That peak is very likely the ghost that we're worried about. The third section, mode 3 plot, shows the same thing, and again in a different format, and we have a bad ghost right there. Mode 4 plot, <clears throat> we asked to see that exact ghost. And here the light comes from, uh, from the left drawn in red, turns blue after it reflects from surface 6, goes back to surface 1, turns green, and it goes on to the image, and we can see, well, it's out of focus, but it's not all that all that much out of focus, and indeed, it might be a, a bad ghost. Let's go to the MGH dialog again, and there's some more features we haven't used. Let's actually take the trace the path of a real ghost ray at zone 0.5. Remember, the other one was paraxial. This is real. So, click the Argos button. And it shows you the ray reflects from surface 6, then again at 1, and proceeds to the image, where its y-coordinate is that. That may be a serious ghost. Now, if you catch this early on <coughs> in the design process, you can actually control that in the merge function. If you type help ghost, it describes how you can control that. You put a target in the merge function, p ghost, paraxial ghost, and give the, the, 
two surfaces, the high and low, at which it was reflected. And it'll actually control that during the design phase. So you might say, yeah, say you ask for a value of 5 with a low weight, add the paraxia, goes from 6 to 1. If this, if the ghost size doubles, well, that means the intensity is one fourth of what it was before. So this is a good, um, uh, good first choice. And we've often controlled ghosts this way. Uh, it it uh, controls that ghost, and often when you do that, of course, another ghost image becomes more in focus. So you add that to the merit function, and you keep going until all the ghosts are balanced as well as possible. And that's the end of lesson eleven.